something like 118 points. They were looking for a big percentage booster again today against Malcolm Blight's Warriors. Robert Odie, do it down there today. The first quarter, it was a very muddly first quarter. In fact, at one stage, I would have said Glenelg probably had their wrong kicking boots on. I think there were three or four shots for goal. We saw them kick out of bounds on the four. Yes, that, those three players, Kernahan, Holst and Nichols, certainly had opportunities in the first quarter to put Glenelg a lot further in front than they were. They were 3-5 to 2-3 at quarter time and they'd attacked on countless occasions. They'd played well across the centre, they'd got the ball into attack, but when they got it up there, they certainly didn't straighten and have a go at the goal with any confidence whatsoever. Woodville had started off with the intention of defending. There's no doubt that Gary Haylock tried to stay with Tony McGuinness to cut him out of the game and stop him gaining any ascendancy whatsoever as a very telling player in the match. And I think this may have told against Glenelg a little bit, but nevertheless, they won well across centre. They got plenty of attack and they kicked into the breeze in the first quarter. And at quarter time, they were doing it pretty well at 3-5 to 2-3. Thanks, Robert. And that's where we'll pick up action today from Football Park, the start of the second quarter. Siren sounds to start the second quarter here at Football Park. Glenelg by eight points. Carey against Parker. Parker got the tap. McGuinness was put on a very good tackle. Comes to ground. Kevin Harris comes through with it. Onto the right boot. It was a hurry kick. It's very high. Plays underneath. Couldn't settle it. It's Detman trying to go forward for Woodville. And the umpire will bounce up. Right half forward flank. For Woodville. Clift will do some ruck work for Woodville against Carey. Carey got the tap. Salisbury. Burst through the pack, McDonald thumped it straight to Haylock. Haylock's kicks back towards the full forward area. Sun bothering a couple of players, but uh, Glenelg will get it out. Harris coming in against Simon. Simon's picked it up. His handball was a bit astray, and Woodville have chipped in through Heaney to Detman to Harris. Thought about it, got into trouble. Handball was poor. McFarlane over the top of his head to David Holst. Holst will come out to Duthie. And Duthie will come towards the centre wing. Was looking for McGuinness. The kick wasn't good, but Stringer almost backed it up. Parker read it best off hands. He goes over to McDonald. That's Trevor McDonald. McGuinness comes in. Mackerath now for Woodville. Didn't have a lot of time to look. But he's got a free kick. And there's a report. And it looks as though the Galil player is it Stringer. He's a very careless player, isn't he? This is twice in the last two times we've seen Alan Stringer. He's done careless things like that. You'll remember this ground, Robert, because uh, he was reported, of course, for throwing the ball into the grandstand here that day, wasn't he? He was. Reprimanded for that. Meanwhile, off hands, Duthie for Glenelg. McGuinness. Plenty of trouble. Makara. Just give it straight to Carey. He'll put the bays up towards the centre square. He's looking for Kernahan. He did it easily. Played on quickly to Tony Hall. Hall looking for Nichols. Mark not paid, but he'll get the free kick anyway. Chirpik hanging on to Nichols' arm. So Greg Nichols now, wasn't that accurate in the first quarter? In fact, the Bays kicked five shots out of bounds in that first quarter. But Greg Nichols now is only 25 metres out. He's got one goal on the board so far. Looking for a confidence kick here. It's a good looking drop punt. Umpire says that's a goal, so Greg Nichols gets his second. And Glenelg move along to four goals, five. Woodville, two goal, three. Well, that was a very well-delivered kick by the Glenelg side when they went up into attack, got one over the top and they caught Kevin Sherping underneath the ball allowing Greg Nichols to take the mark and one out he certainly gets his fair share of the kicks. One outstanding feature of the game as far as Glenelg is concerned at the moment, I don't know whether it's good or bad, but they're certainly going on with their tackling. When they make the tackle and then when the player's got rid of the ball, they complete the tackle to make sure he doesn't get up and, can, and he's not able to recover in any way. Captain versus vice-captain in the middle. Parker, the vice-captain for Woodville, wins it. And the free is paid to the receiver of the ball, Gary Haylock in the middle. And he'll wait for a chance to put Woodville straight in. Towards the half-forward line. Out in front, Blight coming out from the pocket. He's playing in the pocket today. Couldn't quite hold on to it, so the pack forms. In fact, uh, there's been some position changes uh, Who's playing centre-half forward for them now, Robert? Um, Roger Cliff has gone to centre-half forward. John Seaboam has followed Malcolm Blight back into the forward pocket. Cliff's a very uh, tall young 18-year-old for them. In front, 
Harris, one of the recruits from Mount Gambier. His uh, kick wasn't accurate, and so Glenelg get a chance to go away with it. Harris followed through, unloaded a Glenelg player, but they get hold of it again. Down towards their half-forward line, Kernahan read that well, turns it in with the left boot, finds 12th tree again. 12th tree, just that ability to get in front, provide the chance for his player. A nice kick from Kernahan to give, to give uh, Leon 12th tree another shot at goal. 12th tree at one point in the first quarter. This time that looks good, straight through the middle. His first goal, the base kick away. Five goal five, Woodville are on two three. Well, they'll certainly have the ability when the ball's on the ground to make sure there's two or three, then a little bit more team of plum than do um, Woodville. They're able to get the ball from body to body just a little bit more sharply. They ran that ball up the wing then very well to Kernahan, who was able to just outmaneuver his opponent and get the ball on to 12th tree. A beautiful left foot control kick, and what a lovely click it was from Leon 12th tree. Five minutes of the second quarter gone, and Glenelg have added two straight goals. Parker against Carey, the bounce favoured Parker. He tapped it down to Fuller. Fuller's kick is hurried up towards the half ball position, but Salisbury out in front of Detman takes a safe mark. He'll go back and look for some leads. It goes towards the centre area. It's a high kick. Kernahan in the middle of the pack. Over the back it goes. 12 tree got a hurried handball out looking for Marshall. Marshall gets body over the ball, hurries it out. Picked up by Holst. He's got time to look. Right boot, hooks the ball back. And he's missed again. Melg not quite accurate enough at the moment. Holtz minor score takes Glenelg along to five goals, six. Woodville, two goal, three. Holst, had a snap similar to that in the first quarter. She also managed only a minor score for. Had more time there, though. Didn't quite straighten his body up. Sherpick, the fullback for Woodville, goes towards the centre square. Kernahan in front, Parker from behind. Off hands, Motlop picks it up. He's got a running player in, McFarlane. He's got time. His kick's high towards the pocket area. Nichols is in front. Spoiled away from behind. Simons read it well off hands. Came through the pack. He's got Carey all loose here in the centre-half forward position. The kick's found him. Carey onto the right boot. And even the captain's offline. Another minor score to Glenelg. He was 20 metres out directly in front. Bit of pressure on them, though, because Carey was on his own until the ball got to him. And the Woodville are providing plenty of pressure from their defence. Yeah, I think he dropped that ball like a bag of spuds. Then he hurried a little bit. He got a completely the wrong angle to his foot. Sherpick's kick out went straight to Kernahan. So Stephen Kernahan pulls up the sock. He's a long way out from goal. His forwards are calling for him to drive it in long to the square. Carey's setting himself there. Kernahan's kick is long. It'll reach the square. A big pack will fly. Carey in front. It's taken the mark. Came from the right hand side of the pack. Read the ball best took front spot almost and pulled down the virtual easy mark so Peter Carey directly in front 10 meters out bang through the middle Carey's first goal for Nelg's sixth they're six goal seven leading Woodville two goals three and he'll come down the middle big high kick Max Parker could have been paid that I thought the Bays are on their way. McGuinness giving the run in the space to Stringer. Oh, Stringer did that well. But he couldn't get it around fast enough. So Woodville, away they go. Oh, grabbed him. That was a, a give by Sherpick to Heaney, who had nowhere to go, and the Bay player ready to grab him. Good try by Marshall. Not quite there, so Woodville block it. So Woodville player jump on the ground again then. He didn't try and keep his feet. The Glenelg players did, and as a result... 12th tree. Two oh, down. Oh, so oh, he was onto it. Oh, my goodness. And as a result, when uh, they were going into goal, 12th tree had his possession of the ball. He's in full balance and should have and completed the handball, but I think Nichols saw the goal post coming at him and decided that he would uh, let it go. <laughs> Sherpick's kick went out towards the outer side, but the Bays will go back into attack again. That's a high kick in towards the full forward area. Stringer at the back. Sits there easily. It's two hands on the ball and says thank you very much. Maybe he can make up for that uh, error there by Nichols. Alan Stringer is only about 20 metres out. 
going to take his time. Drop punt, doesn't miss, kicks it high into the back of the grandstand. That's Alan Stringer's second goal. Khalil moved along to nine goals, 12. Woodville, four goal, four. Once again, we see the opportunities for little bit creating through their ability to get the ball back quickly into the forward line as Woodville take the ball out. They get it out on that half forward line or across the centre and kick it back in. So it's a one out opportunity. Glenelg are always there to receive that re quick rebound kick which their defending players are giving to them up forward. But Alan Stringer marked and he certainly kicked a very nice kick then. Very deliberate and very accurate. Tiger's got a hard job to do in ruck today. He's up against Carey and Kernahan. This time, Carey's back in the centre. Favors, bounce favours Carey. Takes it out of the air. He's well grabbed, however. And that's holding the ball. It's 15 metres as well. So Max Parker will go long. Chips away. The lead was on. Comes off hands. Blight picks up. He's held. Umpire says play on. It was a clever play by Blight. Then he, he got the ball. Felt the tackle coming. Decided not to take it at all. Well, the point is, if yeah, if he didn't take it at all, it was definitely no, I, holding I, I the think man. He didn't take it. What I should have said exactly that. Look, he had the chance to take it. And I think it was holding the man. I think you're right. I think the umpire was a bit reluctant to give it to him. I think he outwitted his opponent actually. Meanwhile, Kernahan forward for the Bays to the half forward line. In front is Jack Weir. Holster's not going to let him play on. That's for sure. He'll go back, looking for a lead on the outer side. Now he'll come in towards the middle, where he's kicked it over Fuller's head. Over the pack set as well. In the pack was Max Parker to pick up a free kick. Peter Carey looks uh, not well pleased with the way the umpire decisions are going against him at the moment. To centre half forward for Woodville. They can't take it, so McGuinness runs it out. Paul to half forward for the Bays. In front, Nichols. Big Holst. Oh, Holst, I'm sorry. David Holst. Very strong, confident mark in the true centre half forward position for Grinnell. They've used this quarter well. David Holst kick it beautiful. His first goal. Grinnell comfortably in front now on 10 goals 12. And the Warriors are four goals four. Well, Tony McGinnis is usually not a, a, a great handballer. His main part of his game is he's running and his powerful leg. But on that occasion at the half-back line, it was he that powered away. And in, the, in that power movement, sent a very low and strong handball forward. And that handball resulted in a kick up to the forward line for a great mark by Holt. Into time on, Glenelg have had 22 scoring shots to Woodville's eight. Parker got the tap, but uh, Carey took it well out of hands. He'll go across towards Simons. It's being chased by McDonald. Simons picks it up, looks for support. He's got 12 three, but goes over the top of that player's head. It's high. Tackle set themselves. The mark's taken in the middle by Haylock. Has a look at both sides of the ground, then goes back towards the grandstand side. Tapped on cleverly overhead. Stringer will pick it up. We'll come across to Salisbury. Salisbury go back to Stringer if he's got the pace. It sits for him beautifully. Kick wasn't good, however. Dribbles one. Motlops first there. Stringer. Well tackled, but Stringer's fighting hard. And the umpire will bounce it up in the uh, left half forward line for the Bays. Well, if that wasn't holding the ball, yeah. I don't know what was. He certainly got a fair charge there. He dropped it the first time. Then when he was on the ground, he dragged it back under him. The Woodville player perfected another perfect tackle. Prominsky, his kick goes high, just covers the 10 metres. Simons was in front, couldn't take it. McFarlane now for the Bays. He's got time, thought about the handball, onto the right boot, fires it into the goal. And McFarlane's got one on the board. That's his first for the game. Glenelg, they're cruising. 11 goals, 12. Woodville, four goals, four. Woodville with a massive task ahead of them. 56 points down as we go into the second half of Football Park. Max Parker gets it away to Fuller. He's met heavily by Carey and runs backwards. That hurt him. McGuinness runs it out for the Bays. Out wide onto the flank. Motlock marks in front of Detman. Motlock, short one, on his own. 12-3 into Stringer. Plenty of time to settle down. It's a practice game for him. And he's goal. Half a minute into the second half, and Glenelg go to 13 goals, 13. Woodville on 4-5. That's Stringer's third goal. Well, Alan Stringer was reported in the second quarter. 
he might need all this practice he's going to get too, Keith, that you just mentioned there. If he gets the displeasure of the commissioners, but he's certainly been a very good player on the half-forward line for Glenelg. They're getting plenty of opportunities from their centre line. And on that occasion, you see Stringer going in, and snapping truly at the goal. Very nice kick. And Glenelg just going further and further away. We have certainly got to find some confidence to get at the ball and real determination to make that ball work for them. The Bays' first goal coming after only 30 seconds of play. Parker against Carey. Carey got the tap, comes off hands. Kevin Harris to Shakir. Goes up towards the half-forward line, but uh, Ross gives for Glenelg. Ever reliable. Takes the easiest of marks. His kick's high. Sits up a little bit with a breeze, looking for Kernahan. He was at the back. Pushed his opponent out of the way in Blacksall. Umpire was right there, so Scott Blacksall will take the three for Woodville. He goes straight down the centre of the ground. Comes off hands. Umpire calls play on, and Woodville a chance through Coop. High-looking kick, could run through, took one bounce, and hops straight through for a goal. So Doug Coop has got his first on the board, and Woodville answer, answer Glenelg straight away. They're five goals, five, Glenelg 13-13. That was well done by Doug Coop. He's on the half-forward line at the moment. He ran across there on the pack onto his left leg. It wasn't an easy shot for a goal, and he just snapped it into the goal square. And it carried quite some distance, and perhaps indicative of a slight breeze that's blowing towards that northern end. The ball went and carried, carried well over Bob Beecroft's head, and it ran through for what looked to be a very simple goal in the end. So it's veteran against veteran as Carey against Parker. Parker wins it, but Holt picks it up, picks it up off the ground out on the grandstand wing for the Bays. Might sit for anybody, but Tony Hall runs it through there well. Has to meet Parker, who trapped it well for Woodville. Holtz tried to get hold of it, couldn't do it. Tempted to go through Woodville. Harris has a player out wide. That's Jaquir. He handballs into the open. Chance for a shot at it. And Woodville at their second on the board. Scott McDonald that came on just towards the end of the last quarter there, Keith. Scott McDonald down from Queensland in his first season for Woodville, and that's why I couldn't pick him. He's on uh, in the second half. So Woodville, 6-5 behind Glenelg on 13. 13. And that movement then by Woodville looked a little bit better. Much quicker movement. Steve Jack, we seemed a bit reluctant initially to give the ball, but finally he did, and McDonald made no mistake with his kick. Lively start to the second half. Three minutes played and three goals on the board. Two to Woodville, one to the base. Parker missed the tap, running through was Footer, got his boot the ball, Stringer will pick it up. Ducks around two opponents, and drives back towards the edge of the square. Kernahan in the middle, Blacksall from behind. The umpire's paid the mark. Kernahan is not happy, thought he might have had a free kick. Blacksall's kick is high and long, comes off hands. McFarlane will pick it up for the Bays. Has a look, his kick was not good. Simon's first to it. Heaney picks it up. Handball across to Haylock. Haylock goes across to Big Max Parker. He's done a mighty job so far for Woodville. Druck through day, come up against Carey and Kernahan. Parker chips away, looking for Blight. Comes off hands, McFarlane couldn't take it. Blight tackles late and gives away the push in the back. John McFarlane for the Bays. Comes grandstand side. Heaney from behind. Marshall read it well off hands. One bounce. Simon's calling him through. Three bounces, Marshall. That one didn't pop up, but he recovered well. Simon's will shepherd him. Marshall's still going. Right. About his fourth bounce. Then booms it in towards the full forward area. It's up high. Comes off hands. Tony Hall's got it. Goes to ground. Met heavily by Shear. The umpire said that was too high. So Tony Hall will take the free kick. Shear was a bit unlucky then because Tony Hall was thrown down and Shear was only a coming in and uh, he had nowhere else to tackle him but nevertheless certainly the tackle was uh, high on Hall so he gets a chance to go in for the Bays. Tony Hall playing his 23rd league game. That kick going away but uh, goal umpire says it's through. Tony Hall gets a goal on the board, his first for the game and Glenelg are 14-13, they're 97 points, Woodville 6-5-41. Position can be deceiving, can't they? That ball curving right across the goal face. The umpire hardly moved from here. It looked as though it was a behind, but it certainly showed that there is a bit of breeze as that ball cutting across by Tony Hall then. And he takes advantage of the free kick that he receives, and Glenelg 
eight goals, eight in front. So at about the five minute mark of the third quarter, it's Max Parker, still there, hits this one well. Down to Coop, dodges and weaves, gets to the half forward line. Farland spoilt well, but Harris, I think the ball popped up with, uh, without uh, McFarlane getting a touch at it, but Harris is not worried. He's on his way. To Coop, who has another shot. Heaney. Sorry, is it Heaney this time? And Heaney's picked up, picked up his first goal. Woodville, 7-5 behind Glenelg at 14-13. centre wing out of side Parker against Kernahan Parker got the big thump Hulk Stringer Shearer will make sure he stays there and go back and take the kick Alan Stringer long one up forward looking for Nichols who's on the lead in front was Detman Motlop to McGuinness he's got 12 three if he wants him McGuinness will run in all the way will he go yes back chip goal Tony McGillis gets his second goal, Glenelg, they're 15-17, Woodville 7, goal 6. Oh, and how much better Tony McGillis looks when he runs straight at the goal. A little while ago at the centre of the ground, we saw him crabbing across the ground, trying to make a play on. But on that occasion, when he got it in the pocket, he looked at the centre of the goal line and he took off for it and gave himself a better angle all the time as he was running in and then kicked a back scurry through the centre with great control. Truly, the kick of a champ. Up to the 19-minute mark of the third quarter. As we see Max Parker still soldiering on. This time against Kernahan. He gets it to Coop. Coop, big kick forward to Beecroft. He's a solid man if he gets in front. And a good mark. About 40 metres out, perhaps 30 metres out. The umpire asks the uh, Gwinnell player and Seabone to go back. Now, in fact, McFarlane uh, directing the traffic as well. <laughs> Over the top was Salisbury to no avail because it's a goal to Woodville and that's the third goal to Beecroft. Third goal to Beecroft and Woodville go to eight goals six. Winoga 15 goals 17. There's four goals won this quarter to Woodville. They certainly played a little bit better. Four one to something like about three goals four to Glenelg. So Woodville plugging on a little better this quarter. 20 minute mark of the third quarter. Kernahan against Parker. Parker got the tap to Simons. He's got a hurried kick. It went high out. Covered the 10 metres. Kernahan couldn't take it. Tony Hall in there. Kernahan eventually got the handball out. Just as he did, the umpire blew the whistle to ball it up. Parker again. Taps it. Coop up towards half forward to Beecroft out in front again. Oh, couldn't take the mark, but uh, the push in the back, the umpire says. Correct. So Bob Beecroft, almost uh, the exact position he's just kicked his previous third goal from. In fact, it was Walsh whom he beat before and was standing the mark uh, just a minute or two ago. Yes, Walsh is his opponent. Played on Bob Beecroft all day. Beecroft been at full forward. You can see if he kicked this one with his foot instead of his shin like the last one. Looks better. It's a beautiful kick. It's a goal to Bob Beecroft. His fourth for the game. Woodville get two quick ones. They move along to nine goals, six. Glenelg, 15, 17. Yes, I think he just used the last one with his shin just to let him know that he could kick it 30 metres with that kick and still kick it straight. He's kicked quite well today, actually. I think that's four goals, one to Bob Beecroft. Played quite a good game. He's got a bit of height advantage over Gavin Walsh back there. And he's showing a little bit of pace, too, on his reading of the ball, on the direct lead as the ball comes in. Gavin Walsh is not slow on that run ahead, but Beecroft, obviously a powerful man as well as being strong. 47 points the difference. It was 56 when we started this quarter. Kernahan got the tap. Motlop's kicks hurried. Hall in front, read it well. Hurried handball across, tried to back it up himself, but Detman came through. Two or three taps, finally picks it up and gets it to Doug Coop. Coop has one bounce. Comes across to Big Parker. Parker fell over it just at the wrong time, but Detman followed it through. Harris picks up. Woodville had a chance. They're uh, 
still running. Ball coming out towards the grandstand side. Scott McDonald was the player in front for Woodville. He got the push in the back. Some lovely movement through the centre there by Ian Dentman, wasn't it? He certainly showed some confident movement. It'd be nice to see him do that more often, and Scott, Woodville would certainly benefit too. Scott McDonald was looking for Beecroft, but didn't come off, and it's, it's all the bays back here. David Hoxt. Booms one out. Heaney and Simons. Simons in front. Look to play on. Onto the left boot. Looking for Marshall. So Heaney read that well. Umpire didn't pay that mark. Heaney's in trouble. He needs support. There's nothing there. Ross Gibbs comes in. I would have thought uh, Heaney may have stopped that ball dead and perhaps a bit unlucky not to have been paid the mark. Well, he was certainly tripped over. There was no doubt about that. I think Heaney just had a few words with umpire Skiles to let him know the fact. Schofield's bounce up. Turner Hemp takes it out of the air above Coop. I won't get the ball out of the bottom of that pack. We'll see another bounce up grandstand side in the shade here at Football Park. It's been a beautiful day though. Bounce up. Kernahan taps it straight to McGuinness. His handball goes up over the top to Marshall. Goes to the pocket area, looking for Nichols out in front. Over the top of their player's head. Stringer coming in to pick it up. Scoops oh, it up beautifully with one hand. He's got Simons back if he wants him. But goes across the ground to David Marshall. He kicked this distance too. He's a delightful kick. Just tends to get a bit wide sometimes, in my opinion, when he plays in the centre of the ground. But there's no doubting his skills. It's a magnificent kick of the ball. David Marshall, 23 years of age. He's deliberate take his time drop punt doesn't come back enough minor score to david marshall and to glenelg who move along to 15 17 they're 107 points 40 108 points i should say 15 18 glenelg woodville 9 6. chirping big kick out to the center kernahan almost to take harris strongly through towards the half forward line for woodville nicely tapped on by mcdonald he'll get hold of it on the left boot Short one in, they're looking for Beecroft again, who was behind this time. Whoa. Interception there by Shear. Now Holst attempting to come out with it. As I would say, a Salisbury. Salisbury, yeah. Harris is getting up very slowly from the last interception, and that will be bad news for Woodville if he's not feeling well. Turnahan, fine mark. 15 metres must be played against Max Parker. The ball's run on by Grinnell Marshall to Stringer again in the play. Big kick this time, centering it. Carey was in the middle, couldn't hang on to it. Came out beautifully, though. There's a pick-up and a shove from Heaney. So Simons has picked the ball up, and he's got some skills, hasn't he, Keith? He's a lovely mover. He's, he used to be a, a real drink of water, I used to call him. I saw him play as a young junior for Glenelg. He's come up through the ranks and he's been a very fine player. And he certainly found his niche on the wing for Glenelg. He's a very talented young man. Doofy from the outer side. Big kick. Right into the square. In front. Stringer. He's having a good game, Robert. He is. Chris, they put Chris Shear back onto him this quarter. He came on last quarter to centre half forward. But Chris Shear has been a put into defence in this third quarter and Alan Stringer still playing very well back in that half forward area he's had 13 kicks well, this will be his 13 uh, Brett Mackerath back on the ground after his indiscreet play earlier and there it is Stringer's fourth goal Glenelg comfortably 16-18 Woodville 9-6 so Glenelg win their third game of the season. Certainly a better start than the start to 83 when they lost their first eight straight. Final scores, Glenelg 25-23, 173 points. Woodville 13-7-85 goal kickers. Nichols got seven, Stringer six, Motlop three, McGuinness and Hulse two. While for Woodville, Beecroft got seven and Malcolm Blight got two. Looking at the stats of the game, well Glenelg virtually won in every department. Kicks 229 to 158, Marks 87-49, handballs well, Glenelg 113 to 80. Freeze fairly even, while Rucks won out of centre. Woodville won 17 to Glenelg's 11. And scoring shots, well, Glenelg had many, 48 to 20. Robert, your best players? Yes, well, it certainly was a one-horse race, Rick. Best players, I like to look at them in defence first. And I thought John McFarlane was terrific on the half-back flank today. I never stopped marvelling at the young fellow, how he keeps coming up each year, and he does a terrific job. 
And again today, he got a thousand kicks, it seemed like, but every one he tried to place to advantage did very well indeed. And of course, he's only one of a member of a group of men in the back line who are doing very well for Glenelg. Um, Salisbury and Gibbs in particular are also playing well in their roles in defence. Across the centre, Tony Simons and David Marshall, they just went on their merry way all day getting kicks. Sometimes I thought that perhaps David Marshall was getting too many of them too wide on the boundary line, but nevertheless he got them and his kicking is so good on both sides of his body that he was able to put so many to advantage. In attack, Alan Stringer was terrific for his six goals. He was a constant threat and all day he just, particularly from the first quarter on, during the second and third and fourth quarters, he kicked two goals in each quarter and played very, very well. Stephen Kernahan in the ruck continues to do good things. Might not have been his ruck work that was all that good today, but in particular, his kicking, his right foot kick to the southern end to Nichols, and his left foot kick up the northern end, which you saw on the replay, were absolutely superb plays, and Tony Hall and David Holst did well. For Woodville, it was hard to say for best players. Perhaps Gary Haylock and Kevin Harris worked very hard with Max Parker doing a very good job in the ruck. Robert, you mentioned Kevin Harris. I'm rather a jeer for him, having seen him play. Uh, he's got some talent. Oh, I think he has. He's certainly a very good chaser of the ball, a worker at the ball. He perhaps lacks a little bit of finesse at the moment because he's only young in league football ranks. And I think that given a bit of time and a little bit more composure, I think he'll do very well. Also, from what you said, the Bay's getting apparent even spread of strength right over the ground in offence and defence? Yes, I think so. I think that Glenelg have are taking the good with the bad a lot better than they did in the past. There was a, there's a lot less emotional reaction on the ground now by Glenelg players. I think Alan String has done a couple of indiscreet things in the couple of times we've seen him through a football up into the grandstand a couple of weeks ago, and today he got a little upset once. But other than that, Glenelg are taking the good with the bad. They keep coming, one player following the other, and I think that that's going to stand them in very good stead as the season progresses. Thanks, Robert. And one of the casualties today up there was Malcolm Blight, the coach of Woodville, who apparently pulled a hamstring in his left leg quite badly.